Thanks Notion for sponsoring this video. Our phones can be amazing, but they can also be our worst enemies. As it comes out of the box, your phone is a big distraction. It's flashy, beautiful, and makes a lot of noises that ensure your eyes stay glued to the screen. Your phone is created to make sure you're using it as much as possible, and everything is placed in a smart way to ensure you become almost a slave to it. However, we now have several tools at our disposal to invert this trend and make our phone a tool that is actually helpful to foster a productive and healthy lifestyle instead of an obsessive one. This video is all about that, 15 things you can change and configure in your phone to regain control. So let's get started. Focus profiles allow you to concentrate on several tasks by minimizing distractions, but my advice for you is to create several profiles that are automated and switch back and forth to optimize your experience as much as possible. You don't have to create only a work focus profile. You can create leisure focus, studying focus, exercising focus, or family time focus modes. As you are configuring your options, you can choose the people you want to receive notifications and calls from, as well as the apps that are authorized to send you notifications, whether they are time sensitive or not. While it's obvious that as you're working you can switch to work focus to ensure you're not receiving any social media notifications, you probably never considered creating a leisure focus mode that ensures no work notifications get delivered to you as well. And focus profiles are also tied into how you organize your home screen. The first thing I suggest you to do is to organize and create home screen pages that take into account your profiles. For instance, you can organize one of the pages on your home screen to only feature productivity related apps like your email app, a note taking app like Notion, your office apps, Dropbox and so forth. As you create your focus profile, you can choose this home screen page to be the only one showing during your work focus, which will help you avoid any distracting app in the process. A lot of people disable notifications, that's a basic tip now, but they still leave the badges on. Badges are the tiny red dots you can find at the corner of your app icons and they're a major source of anxiety and fear of missing out. There's this update you haven't seen yet, this new picture, email or message you haven't tapped into. There is an option on your phone to simply disable these and you'll survive, I promise. When you raise your iPhone to look at it, it automatically wakes the lock screen. This basically shows all the things you're missing out, which will force you to stop doing whatever you're doing and look at your phone immediately. This is particularly unhelpful if you actually raise your phone because you are placing it somewhere else or simply by accident. You can disable raise to wake on the display and brightness settings to make sure this doesn't happen again. With iOS 15, you can now schedule a big notification summary to send you all the notifications from the day at a predetermined time instead of receiving everything as it arrives on your phone. This way you can catch up when it's convenient and while ensuring you're getting the information when you want instead of when your phone wants you to. Personally, I have this scheduled to arrive right after my morning routine, after my lunch break and just before my unwinding period at night. I leave out any phone calls and personal emails and that's pretty much it, just like a personal assistant. Most, if not all, websites can be easily read with reader mode on Safari, and you can actually make this a default option for most read pages instead of always having to turn it on as you open a new page. All you have to do is tap the reader view icon on Safari, elect website settings from the drop down menu and turn on the toggle for use reader automatically and press done. No more ads, no more distracting images, just simple and minimal text. How much do you hate getting those app review requests when you're navigating a new app? This is another thing that can be simply disabled with a couple of clicks. Go to App Store, Settings and then In-App, Ratings and Reviews and disable the option. As simple as that. And one last pop-up notification trying to convince you to do something you really don't feel like doing. As soon as Apple caught up with the Android world and decided to allow widgets, we, productivity crazy people, knew our time had arrived. So to make sure you're boosting your phone's productivity, tailoring your home screen to give you a bird's eye view of everything you have to do for today is a big catch. A calendar app, your email app, a to-do list widget, a weather widget, and even something called sticky widgets, which is the widget representation of a sticky note, are all fun and useful things you can add to your home screen to ensure you're not missing a thing. Your phone has text replacement options that help you quickly write useful and repetitive information without typing it from zero, as well as improving your writing and avoiding slang. 
Some useful shortcuts you can consider are shortcuts to type your full email address and another for your full home address. And then the typical ones, by the way, in my opinion, no problem, etc. You still take the same amount when writing, but the receiver of your text or email will get a full version. Speaking of writing, there's nothing as annoying as writing a full email on your phone. While most email apps don't allow for in-app template creation and usage, a good way to overcome the problem is to simply use your native notes app or another app of your choice to create a template repository that you only have to copy and paste into your email app whenever you need to send something from your phone. And if all of those hacks haven't worked so far, you can still set screen time for yourself on iPhone. On your settings, you can tap app limits and then add limits for one or more app categories or for individual apps. Then all you have to do is set the amount of time allowed and set limits for specific days. Shortcuts were introduced as an iPhone default app back in 2019, but I feel that most of us still haven't tapped into its real power yet. And here are a few amazing examples. You can get the travel time for any address instantly. When you run the shortcut, it'll put the address into maps, grab the driving time to that address from your current location, and then return the driving time to you. You can create an automated routine where you can share your Wi-Fi without sharing the password. The shortcut will basically display a QR code with your Wi-Fi password on it, and all your friends have to do is scan the code to access. You can also create a reading mode. With one click, your iPhone will set a timer, start your favorite app, enable Do Not Disturb, and play some music. As the productivity holy grail, Notion allows you to do everything you could with the computer on your phone. But as it's a complex tool, sometimes it can be a bit painful to navigate your workspace to find what you're looking for. You can add a widget though to your phone that has a compilation of your most used pages or favorites, like notes, a project you're currently working on, your habit tracker page, and so on. All you have to do is click those pages to access them without having to open and search around inside the app. You can actually turn your iPhone's keyboard into a trackpad. Just press and hold on the spacebar while typing and the letters will disappear and the entire keyboard will transform into a trackpad. Slide your finger around and you'll be able to move the text cursor anywhere on the screen with a lot of precision. And Safari extensions are a great way to make your browsing experience a lot better. And now you're finally able to run extensions on your phone. Pocket, for instance, now runs directly in your browser, helping you collect all references in one place only, converting text into audio and helping you organize and search via content type. Bring is another great extension that helps you bookmark recipes and add their ingredients to a shopping list as you're browsing. Even the famous Momentum extension, which is so popular on the study community, now comes to your phone, helping you convert your Safari start page into a smart and inspiring dashboard. And if you want to ensure you're doing all of these hacks, I've compiled all of them into a nice Notion checklist that you can get for free right now in the description box below. It also has a lot more hacks and tweaks to maximize your iPhone's productivity, as well as an extensive list of apps, extensions, shortcuts, and widgets to experiment with. And you can, of course, duplicate that checklist into your own Notion workspace. If you're still looking for the perfect software to help you with balancing everything in 2022, Notion can help you with that and so much more. Notion can be used individually or to collaborate with other people. You can organize anything in your life with all of its templates and tools, including habit trackers, journaling pages, personal projects, work schedules, birthdays, networking events, cleaning chores, and so much more. You can use and explore Notion anytime you want and for as long as you like because your personal plan is literally free, with absolutely no restrictions or strings attached. It's the best investment you can make and it doesn't cost a cent. To start using Notion today and get your free account, you can go to the link in the description box or you can click the button that's on the screen right now. I really hope you've enjoyed today's video and I will see you next week. Bye guys!